Thanks to Ting for sponsoring this video. The Mac was starting to feel a little stale. It was getting updated with new Intel processors, but the design had stayed the same. But now, well, the design is it's still the same. Uh, but there's a new M1 chip that's found in the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini, and eventually making its way to the rest of the Macs. I bought a new MacBook Air for myself as my main computer. It was replacing a 2018 MacBook Pro. And as I've been using it, I found a bunch of apps that have been incredibly helpful that have been updated to run, especially on the M1 chip. So these are my favorite Mac apps that I'm using on my new MacBook Air. But also they have universal versions as well. So if you're on an Intel computer, they will work perfectly and are just as useful on your machines. And if you wanna stay tuned to the end of the video, I kind of give a mini review of the M1 MacBook Air and my experiences with the chip and how well it's performed for me. So for a long time, Photoshop was like the default way to really do granular edits with pictures. I found an app on the iPad called Affinity Photo. Actually, one of my friends who's probably the most talented photographer that I have ever met, uh, Drew Photo uh, is his handle, does all of his editing using Affinity on the iPad. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me to try uh, when I was using the tablet, but they've got a version for the Mac and it has been absolutely awesome. Uh, so there's a free trial available. It's not a cheap app. Uh, it's just under $50. If you wanna have a lot of control over what you're doing, you don't wanna pay for Creative Cloud subscription, but you really want to get into photography and photo editing, uh, Affinity Photo has been absolutely amazing. And I'm really surprised with how powerful it's actually been. All right, so this next one is called Magnet. And if you are coming from the Windows 10 side, uh, this is one you're gonna wanna download immediately. It's $2.99, you can get it from the App Store. Actually, in my estimation, I think it steals the best features of Windows 10. It's a snap feature where you can take Windows, drag them off to the side, and they'll resize for you so you can get two apps side by side without sort of doing a, a manual resize. It takes that idea and kind of goes a step further. You can have it snap to the sides, like Windows 10 does, snap to the top and bottom. You can set shortcuts to do certain snaps if you want to. When you pull it out from being snapped, it'll resize if you like it back to the size it was before. It is absolutely a must have and a feature that I'm shocked that Apple has not put in to Mac OS yet. All right, so the next app is called Jettison. It's about five bucks, but there's a free trial. This is a MacBook Air. It's got two ports and it's meant to be portable and go with you. So you're probably always gonna have drives plugged in. For me, sometimes I have drives I'm editing on, sometimes I have time machine drives, sometimes I'm just moving footage over. I have a bunch of drives already in here. And it is admittedly like a first world problem and a minor inconvenience to have to like manually eject all of those drives and I forget and sometimes I don't do it, my computer yells at me. I don't know how important it is to actually eject things, but I tend to like to do it, especially when I have important files on that drive. I don't wanna take the chance of anything getting corrupted. So what Jettison does, and it's very simple, when I put my computer to sleep, it automatically ejects all of my drives. So I can just unplug it and go. It's a small thing, uh, but for my mind, for that $5 price point, it's certainly worth it to own the app and never have to worry about corrupting any files and just pull those plugs out whenever I wanna go. So Bartender is an app perhaps you've heard of and you might think it's gonna teach you how to make the best cocktails available. It is not gonna do any of that stuff for its $15 price, which is a big chunk of change. But hear me out why I think it's worth it. And if you don't wanna pay it, you can try the, the free trial. It lets you customize the menu bar. And the more I use my computers, the more things I have cluttering my menu bar. And Bartender gives me complete control over that menu bar from simple things like what I wanna show or not show, uh, to being able to add pull downs and almost like tabs up there. It just lets me do whatever I want in the menu bar. It's another sort of feature that I think should very clearly be built in uh, to Mac OS, but since it's not yet, gotta rely on third-party apps to do that for you. And if your menu bar looks like a jarbled mess and you wanna just clean it up, uh, Bartender I think is absolutely worth it and gives you a ton of control. 
So I know some of those apps, they cost a few bucks, but I'm gonna counter it and give you guys a way to save some money uh, with Ting Mobile. I've been talking about them for a while on this channel. I think it's one of the best ways to shave bucks off of your cell phone bill. If you look at it, uh, it's probably costing you much more than you expected when you initially signed up. And you're probably at home anyway, not using all those gigs of data that you're paying for. So a couple reasons that I really like it. First, uh, it's super easy to switch. You don't have to go to a store. You can just go to the website, do all of your information there, and they will send you a SIM card. Pretty much any phone works with Ting, which is great, but there's a checker there where you can just confirm the same cell networks that you're pretty much used to anyway. So you get coverage pretty much everywhere, but you can check the coverage map. There's no contract, so you've got flexibility. And of course, you can keep your number. Uh, porting your number is really easy to do. Again, you do it all online. And they've got different plans too to fit your needs. If you're not using much data, they've got a flex plan. It costs you 10 bucks a month. It's unlimited talk and text. And then it's five bucks per gigabyte on top of that. So for like essentially like 15 bucks a month, you've got your cell coverage. And I challenge you uh, to find a better deal than that. If you sound like something that you want to check out, uh, Ting's gonna sweeten the pot a little bit. If you go to john.ting.com, they give you 25 bucks when you sign up, which if you price your plan right, it's like up to a month and a half of free cell service, so it's pretty awesome. But we'll put all the links to it down below. So those are the apps that were meant for the Mac. But there's like a whole secret stash of other apps uh, that you can run on your M1 computers. And those are apps that are meant for your iPad or iPhone. And some of them can be downloaded right from the Mac App Store. Developers have the choice if they want their apps to be able to be uh, installed on computers. Having said that though, there might be some apps that you really want to have on your computer that you use all the time on your iPhone that you just can't download from the Mac App Store. I mean, I'm looking at you, Instagram, uh, it would be really nice to have that app running on your computer. And if you search the app store, you will not be able to find it. Uh, so a big shout out to my friend Quinn from Snazzy Q for showing me something called iMazing. So what iMazing does, it's a, a tool that lets you easily transfer files between your Mac and your iOS device. Uh, but because they're using the same silicon, the binaries are the same, you can actually transfer the whole app package from an iPhone to a computer uh, and it will actually work. Uh, so these apps do function. There are some downsides though, obviously. You can, I can get like updates on it. The version you have installed is the version you are going to rock and roll with. And it's obviously not been meant or optimized to work with a keyboard, a mouse or, or a trackpad. So you know, do it at your own peril, I guess. But if you do wanna try to get some of those apps working, you can definitely do it and actually do it pretty easily. So those are the apps that I've been using, but like they're only so good unless you've got a computer to use them on. Uh, and I've been really happily rocking uh, the M1 MacBook Air. I opted to spec it up a bit. So I went for the eight core version and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that may not have been necessary to have, but I generally keep my laptops for about two years. So I wanted to give myself at least the best chance, especially since the M1 chip in my mind was unproven and it absolutely flies for me. So the best compliment that I can give the MacBook Air and my experience with it is it works like any other computer. Uh, in fact, if you didn't tell me there was a special Apple designed silicon chip inside, I would have no idea. This thing runs fast, it runs efficient, um, and every app I have opened has worked perfectly, whether it was an ARM app or an x86 app, I've had no issues. One small weird quirk, I guess, was that Rosetta doesn't come pre-installed uh, on the computers. When you try to open your first x86 app, it then installs Rosetta. But once it's installed, I am very hard pressed to tell if the app I'm using was made for Intel or it's made for Apple Silicon. Everything just works. And it is amazing how smooth and fluid these apps perform. In all fairness, I'm not doing heavy 3D rendering on it. Like I said, I'm not doing really big, you know, video editing projects on it. I'm not playing games on it. But for me to use it as a computer for work, it has been awesome. And the biggest surprise and most welcome thing about the computer, and perhaps the biggest reason that I think I can wholeheartedly recommend it, battery life is stupid amazing. I was able to use this computer off charger for 10 hours. I mean, just sitting at a desk for 10 hours total, that is unheard of. With my MacBook Pro, I maybe got four, five hours if I turned the brightness all the way down. I did nothing different with the MacBook Air, I just used it. 
and 10 hours was absolutely unheard of for me. So if you're a road warrior or eventually when the world gets back to normal, you are a road warrior or you're in class a lot, the MacBook Air has been awesome and amazing. And I imagine the MacBook Pro would be the same thing, just a little bit faster because it's got the fan in there, has the options for it. Same thing with the Mac Mini. But if the MacBook Air made me feel any way about the M1 chip, uh, it's really positive, especially when you start getting more powerful versions with more cores for iMacs and iMac Pros and 16-inch MacBook Pros and eventually a Mac Pro. It is a really capable processor and I was really pleasantly surprised by how well it's performed.